Hi folks, welcome to Sci-Fi Scavenger, my booktube channel. Today I'm going to cover some recent reads, books that I've read over the last couple of months. There's a good mix of old and more recent books in this set, and I'm going to run through them in reverse order of how much they tickled my fancy. Bringing up the rear in 13th is Eversion by Alistair Reynolds. I, it just didn't work for me. I, I guess I expect dark and gloomy hardcore sci-fi from him, and this wasn't it. I posted a quick review uh, recently, so you can have a look at that. In 12 is The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch. Uh, amusingly, it's set in our era, but obviously written 60 odd years ago, so reality doesn't really match up with um, Dick's imagining. There are a few interesting ideas in the book, as I recall. Some people are like precogs, like in Minority Report, they can see the future or they can at least make predictions with a high probability of success. They're used in many walks of life, including product marketing, guessing which things are going to be, well, predicting which things are going to be successful. Another idea is that the population on Earth can be called up or drafted to be a colonist on Mars. This is a tough life made easier by narcotics, which allow people to briefly visit an immersive virtual reality. They can either be Perky Pat or her hunky boyfriend Walt. This is very convincing with a touch of uncanny valley. If a group partakes together, it can result in several women being Perky Pat, the same one at the same time, kind of overlapping each other, and the same for her hunky boyfriend, making for some odd shared experiences. This virtual environment provides an escape for the colonists, but is quite addictive. An improved drug appears on the scene, which, which gives an even more immersive experience, one not restricted to Perky, Pat and Walt. In fact, it's so realistic that part of the plot revolves around whether, whether or not certain characters have in fact emerged from the virtual experience, or are they still in there against their will, being manipulated for nefarious purposes. It's a good tale, tightly told by Mr Dick, as you'd expect. At number 11 is Star Fraction by Ken McLeod. I liked it. It's set in a near future United Kingdom, which is very disunited. We're on the verge of yet another civil war. Society is splintered, balkanised down to the level of neighbourhoods or even streets. And Ken is a bit of an old lefty, so there's a, some nice Soviet era politics in here. I got a vibe of Life of Brian when I was reading it. There were so many factions with similar names. People's Front of Judea? No, Judea and People's Front, mate. I have a couple of the sequels and I'll be following up at some point. Next in 10th is another golden oldie, Babel 17 by Samuel R. Delaney. I thought this was great too, somewhat old fashioned in style, but then it is well over 50 years old. I reviewed this on the channel so you can head there for more details. I'll put a link to it and any others I mention in the description. At number 9 is All Systems Red by Martha Wells. It's the first of the Murderbot Diaries. I did enjoy this, although I found it a bit lightweight. But then, you know, it is a novella. There's only so much storytelling that could be done in not many pages. I'm looking forward to the novel-length books that come later in the series. All Systems Red introduces us to Murderbot, a heavily armoured a heavily armed security cyborg that has hacked its own governing systems and is thus free to operate more independently than the, than the corporation that owned it intended. It can sit around watching sitcoms and soap operas, but instead Murderbot becomes intertwined with the research crew he's tasked with guarding keeping them safe through various perils that befall them. I like the Murderbot character a lot and enjoyed seeing the rest of the crew grow to see it as one of the crew and not just a glorified vacuum cleaner that could stand in the corner until needed. It was good, but I wanted more. At eight is Arthur C. Clarke's Rendezvous with Rama. Now, I read this when I was a teenager, but only had the vaguest recollections of the storyline. I remember that there was a hollow asteroid thing I remembered that astronauts went inside it, and I remembered that there was some peril inside. So I enjoyed my reread. Clark's writing is sparse, or at least to the point. There's no messing about. He moves the story along promptly. I had forgotten that there was a time constraint. Rama is moving very quickly and will not be in the solar system for very long. So that adds something to the mix too. I'd like to read the sequel, but I don't have a copy, so I'll have to wait until that shows up. But it will. The universe will provide. Next up, uh, Perhaps the Stars by Ada Palmer comes in at number seven. Wow. This book and the three that precede it were quite the ten course banquet. I, I liked most of what was on offer, but I did feel that I was being force fed at times. There's a ton of stuff going on in, in this series, a, a, really a ton, and I'll probably do a series review at some point to commit my thoughts properly to posterity. But suffice to say, I got the impression that Ada was very much enjoying giving her academic background a good airing in writing these books. By book four, I'd very much had enough of the classical and historical references, none of which I really understood. I just don't have that history background, and I suspect that most people don't. 
I just wanted the story to be told. The rest of it had become a bit of an annoyance and a distraction. Anyway, I was impressed by this fourth book. I thought it was a suitable payoff for battling through books two and three, which felt like quite a slog to me at times. I thought that the resolution of the conflict between the hives is strong and the nested double and triple bluffs caught me out. I had several what the hell moments as those played out in the final act. And by the end, what I really wanted to know was what happened to the utopian storyline. Did they get to the stars? How did they do it? How long did it take? I really want that book. Next up, Different Cut the Fish, at number six is Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. What a trip. I really enjoyed this book and really need the rep to find the rest of the Southern Reach trilogy. The atmosphere is confusing from the start. It's unclear what's motivating each person in the all-woman team. Their training seems to have only partly prepared them for the weirdness in the affected zone. Affected by what, though? I need to watch the movie that's based on the book. I gather that's pretty good, too. Up next is Hit the Like button by Subscribe to My Channel. <clears throat> it's a heartwarming tale of community and shared interests online. Liked and subscribed. Then into the top five we go with A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. It's a nice book, a warm hug of a book. As a fully paid up cynical old fart, I'm not sure this book was aimed at me really, but I liked it a lot. I fell for the vibe in the book, despite the almost total lack of plot. The characters and the relationships between them drive the story, but, and I was all in. I'll be reading the rest of the story as soon as I need another warm hug. For more of my disorganized thoughts on this book, you can check out the review I posted a couple of weeks ago. The link will be in the description. And number four in, is Blind Sight by Peter Watt, which is included in this omnibus. That was dark. I, I really need to go back and read it again. I kind of gorged myself on it and read it too fast. There's vampires in space, and the vampires in, aren't even in the aliens. In the late 21st century, a motley collection of modified humans have travelled to the very edge of the solar system in their ride, the thesis. Their mission is to try to make sense of an alien artefact or ship, to communicate with it or even destroy it if needs must. Watts paints a very claustrophobic, paranoid world inside the thesis. The team don't fully trust each other, especially not their vampire skipper. In fact, quite often they don't trust themselves. The alien artifact is emitting electromagnetic radiation at such a powerful level it has a, a physical effect on the crew's brains. Anyway, I won't try to review it here, uh, but trust me, it's a wild ride. The third spot on the podium goes to Echopraxia, which is also in this omnibus. It's, um, the timing's ambiguous, that the events could be contiguous with the plot of Blind Sight, or they could be a few years later. It's probably better to call it a companion than a sequel. This was even more paranoid and atmospheric than Blind Sight, with an even more sinister vampire crewmate. The protagonist here is a baseline human biologist on Earth, mainly tracking experiments gone wrong, things released into the environment that shouldn't have been there. He gets swept up in a factional conflict before being added to the crew of the Crown of Thorns, another set of modified post-humans. He has no clue what's going on, piecing things together as the book develops, carrying us along with him. He's not an empty cipher. He has a guilty secret which he is determined to keep. And despite being an unimproved baseline human, he does have something to add to the crew. He also gets to kiss a vampire, although not by choice and not for the usual reason. It's bleak, dark, lacking much in the way of hope, but it's top-notch hard sci-fi. And if you haven't read it or blind sight, what are you waiting for? In second is Inverted World by Christopher Priest, which I only recently read. I think the story is good, but I also like Priest's writing style. I'll definitely be checking out more of his work. The cast of characters is chiefly concerned with the important business of moving the city of Earth across the ruined landscape. If they don't keep up with the prescribed schedule, stay close enough to the optimum, bad things happen. Priest's writing is really excellent. He doesn't use a single word more than he needs to, but it's beautifully told. The twist at the end took me by surprise, and I suppose it ended rather suddenly, but overall I really liked it. I reviewed that on the channel just a few days ago. You can check that out too. Finally, at the top of this modest heap is Crowd Pleaser Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir, the author of The Martian and the more disappointing Artemis. This is a real return to form. It's a ripping yarn and I think justifies its huge sales. In some respects, Hail Mary is much larger in scale than his other books, certainly it's interstellar. But much like The Martian, Weir keeps things intimate by focusing our attention on one character. I really want to say more, but it's hard not to trip over spoilers with this book. It's not conceptually challenging plot-wise, but there's some good figuring stuff out in there, and lots of proper science is done. I tore through this in no time. I loved it. It's perfect. So those are my recent reads, ranked. What's come off your TBR pile recently? Have you read any of these books? 
Do you disagree with my rankings? Did you enjoy this video? Drop me a comment. I'd love to hear from you and I'll reply to them all. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And that's it for now. I'll be back soon with a book haul, actually a really huge book haul. But for now, bye-bye. See you again soon.